if we can perfectly track it and it still disappears, that's as good as nothing, right? My name is Giacomo. I'm a PhD student here. I study biodiversity in kind of a general sense. A big part of my work is applied, so I do a lot of monitoring work, which means a lot of field work. So my big project right now is a big collaboration we have with the Costa Rican government, which I've been managing, in which we're doing this huge bioacoustic sampling uh, to kind of monitor the health of the forests in the countries. Um, but my real research interests kind of lie with how do we save biodiversity? How do, we, how do we recover nature? And I think for that, it means that you basically have to study inequality. I think inequality is both cause and consequence of our environmental crisis, and so that's really where I'm trying to focus in on. It's certainly very, very important to understand where biodiversity is and how to measure it. But what I see in this kind of field is people treating biodiversity monitoring as kind of the end goal. Oh, once we understand how to monitor, we're done. I think equally important to this whole thing of how we monitor is how do we save. And I think the best science uh, not only gives us more information about what we already know, it really changes the way that we think and interact with the things around us. A main motivation for my research is to, one, kind of uh, wake up kind of this connection with nature and people, find ways that tie people directly to the environment around them and make it clear that we are all part of this living ecosystem that we call Earth. And, and a second part of that, to show them that other possibilities for the future exist, that we can change course, that we have hope, that we can do something different, and not just, you know, to kind of save ourselves, but to make a radically better world for all life on Earth. My passion has always been with the environment. I grew up watching these nature documentaries. I fell in love with Steve Irwin. I just wanted to be here. And as I grew up, I realized that to kind of get close to the environment in the way that I wanted, I was going to be a natural historian. I was focused on animal behavior, animal communication, um, but I was called to do something more to protect the biodiversity that I saw disappearing before my eyes. Um, and so this has gotten me kind of into environmental science, moving up in terms of scale, looking at populations, looking at communities, and now I focus kind of on these larger, either regional or global scale dynamics of biodiversity, and again, how they kind of integrate into kind of these socioeconomic systems that, that we've created. Um, and so that's kind of what I've been doing. I did my master's thesis here on the same kind of things, and I stayed for my PhD. Here in Zurich, we're super fortunate that we have like real forest, and so I spent probably like you know, anywhere between seven to 14 hours a weekend, just like sitting in my hammock and making little fires. And I love it, swimming in the lake when the weather's good, all this sort of stuff. Uh, but I'm also kind of a nerd, so I like to read, I like to play video games, I like to cook. So between a homebody and an adventurist, I'd say. I grew up moving around. Um, and so in general, what I've always said is that I don't really mind where I'm living so long as I'm doing something that I think has impact that I care about. That being said, I usually like get this itch to move around two or three years, but I haven't gotten it here in Zurich yet. I'm actually quite happy here. And funnily enough, by the time that I finish my PhD, Zurich will be the place that I've lived in for the most consecutive years in my entire life. So in some ways I'll be more more uh, Swiss than, than almost anything else, but uh, I'm excited about that.